Well, welcome everyone. Welcome everyone in our live audience and welcome uh, those of you that are watching, uh, watching this live. Let me begin by saying particularly to the minister that Dr. Hamry regrets very much that he's not here to welcome you personally and, and to introduce you. Uh, at the last minute, he was called out of town for a meeting and is unable to get back in time for this event. And he's very sorry about that and hopes to find an opportunity to catch up with you uh, on another occasion. Um, as his replacement, it's my great pleasure to introduce our guest for the day uh, and then to uh, have a conversation with her afterwards, which we will follow then with, with uh, uh, audience questions. And on the housekeeping side, I just say for those of you that are here live, we have a standing microphone over here. And when we get to that point, just go over there and, and, and line up. Uh, we will also take questions from our online audience, and you should have a, uh, a button on the invitation that you can click on to enter your, uh, your online questions. Uh, at least one person has already done that, so I know that it works. Uh, now it is a great honor for me to introduce uh, Mei Hua Huang, who is the Minister of Economic Affairs uh, for Taiwan, appointed to that position in June of 2020. Uh, she has spent her career in the Ministry of Economic Affairs uh, for over 40 years, although I have to say you look much too young to have a career of, of, of that length. As a third female minister, uh, minister in the Ministry of Economic Affairs history, uh, Ms. Wang is responsible for policies relating to industrial and commercial development, international trade, foreign investment, energy, and other economic issues. Her current focus, and I think you'll hear this in her remarks, is on energy transition, industrial innovation and upgrading, investment promotion, and regional economic integration. Uh, Ms. Wang also has authority over state-owned enterprises such as the Taiwan Power Company, CPC Petroleum Corporation, and Taiwan Water Corporation. In other words, everything that makes Taiwan run uh, is under her purview. Uh, before serving as minister, uh, she, her specialty uh, was in intellectual property, and had, she has 20 years' experience working at the intellectual property office uh, in the ministry. So with that, it's a great pleasure to welcome the minister and ask her to come up initially to make remarks, and then we'll have a conversation. Thank you, Beer, and all the distinguished guests and friends. Good afternoon. Uh, I would first like to thank uh, CSI for hosting this event. Uh, this is my great honor to be here. Uh, today, I would like to share with you Taiwan's commitment to the U.S.-Taiwan partnership, as well as why Taiwan mentors to the United States and the global supply chain from an uh, economic perspective. So first, uh, you can see uh, from this slide, uh, the waters surrounding Taiwan are home to the busiest shipping land in the world. This area is densely filled with cargo ships and cruises. China, Japan, South Korea, and many other countries all depend on the shipping lands to deliver their goods to the world and vice versa. And in terms of the uh, geopolitical location, uh, Taiwan is located at the center of the fourth island chain of the West Pacific. Uh, Taiwan's pivotal location in the uh, Indo-Pacific serves uh, several strategic purposes uh, for regional powers, both offensive and defensive. With that in mind, uh, if Taiwan were to become under threat or be in crisis, it would not only have a severe impact on global, global uh, shipping and logistics, but it would also have an impact on the political and economic order of the Indo-Pacific. And not only does Taiwan hold a vital uh, geostrategic position, it is also a thriving hub for international trade. 
making it a very critical global supply chain partner. Uh, last year, uh, Taiwan became the world's 16th largest trade economy with trade exceed exceeding uh, 800 billion US dollars for the first time in uh, Taiwan's history. Moreover, as a vital ally of the United States, uh, our bilateral trade uh, relations have uh, continued to grow. Uh, in 2021, uh, we became United States' eighth largest trading partner. Uh, the bilateral trade in goods uh, surpassed 100 billion US dollar for the first time. But the substantial relations were much far beyond the fingers. Next. Of course, our trade performance is supported by the uh, foundation of our industrial strengths. Uh, Taiwan has the advantage of having an ecosystem of friendly industrial cluster, which allow for the uh, highly effective industrial supply chain that are able to quickly respond to market changes. Uh, this makes it possible for us to provide the world with innovative, high-quality products. Uh, for example, we account for 80% of the global market share of laptop and the motherboard, and 60% of the world's uh, network devices are manufactured by Taiwan. And our bicycle brand uh, include Giant and Merida are well known around the world. And we are the uh, fifth largest exporter of machine tool with a high cost performance ratio. And we also have the 17% of all functional textile and, and apparel uh, come from Taiwan. Uh, we manufacture for brands such as Adidas, Nike, Lululemon, and Under Armour. Uh, of course, Taiwan's uh, bubble tea is also well known around the world. And for decades, the United States has been Taiwan's most important partner. Uh, thanks to our deep cooperation and the uh, uh, vibrant economic, trading, and cultural relationship. Uh, Taiwanese business also consider U.S. company to be vital economic partners. Uh, both sides have established strong supply chain relationship over the years. For example, uh, Taiwanese company have long-term relationship with the uh, leading U.S. brand of consumer electronics, such as Apple, Dell, HP, and many other company. Taiwan's role uh, have evolved from the uh, o OEM, ODM model to the uh, uh, EMS. Uh, EMS is electronic manufacturing services. Services that is uh, mean also include the design. Uh, so for these reasons, uh, U.S. company uh, global deployment uh, strategy plays a very key role uh, in guiding the investment direction of Taiwanese company. Uh, so Taiwanese company uh, work with U.S. brand to set up manufacturing plant in China. Uh, for example, our Foxconn, a very famous uh, company, uh, he is the world's largest uh, country electronic manufacturer, uh, support uh, Apple's iPhone, and they have the very big uh, operation in China. So, uh, because such kind of the uh, supply chain, uh, this aid to the export of critical parts uh, from Taiwan, especially include the semiconductor to China. So if you look at uh, our global export figures, 
uh, Taiwan's export to China, uh, of course, including Hong Kong, account for uh, 42 percent of our uh, total uh, export. Among that, more than 15 are semiconductor exports. And if you uh, only look at the semiconductor export, uh, Taiwan semiconductor export to China make up 60 percent of our total exports. Why so high percentage export to China? That is because uh, the uh, all uh, majority, I say not all, but the majority of different kind of the electronic devices made in China. And for those devices need a lot of the semiconductor. That's a very critical part. And those electronic devices are designed or uh, controlled by the U.S. company. So we always mention about the triangle trade relationship. That is the meaning for including the uh, Apple iPhone and the uh, uh, Dell HP uh, laptop. So from these slides, uh, you can see uh, we have uh, some uh, different uh, situation. Because the fast changing global condition and the growing uncertainty of uh, China's political and economic environment, American business are adjust adjusting uh, their investment strategy. So Taiwanese company will also continue to follow their lead and redirect uh, their investment destination. Uh, again, Taiwanese company are setting up in India for iPhone assembling operation. And other companies are moving to the Vietnam and other Southeast Asia country to produce uh, laptop. So, so with this uh, regard, the figures uh, reflect the shift of the Taiwanese investment uh, in 2018, when the U.S.-China uh, trade uh, conflict began, uh, Taiwanese investment in Asia and India amounted uh, for 9.5 percent of our total outbound investment. Now the figure has grown to uh, 25 percent. Furthermore, given the advantage. Uh, to be uh, closer to customers, Taiwanese investment in the U.S. now make up 11 percent of our total outbound investment. Uh, in the same period, our investment in China has seen a big decline. Uh, China make up uh, 83 percent of our total outbound investment in 2010, but today that figure drops to uh, 32 percent with a uh, decrease of uh, over 50 percent. And the figures also show that Taiwanese companies are taking more balanced global investment strategy to diversify and spread the risk. And uh, Another impact is uh, as international brands are gradually shifting away from China, uh, some Taiwanese companies have chosen to reshore manufacturing to Taiwan. So to support their reshoring efforts, uh, in 2019, my government initiated an uh, investment program uh, to attract them back to Taiwan. So we have a resulting uh, 60 billion US dollar uh, in the new investment and making the Taiwanese supply chain ever more integrated and complete. 
that never seen uh, before such kind of the tray. So now, uh, let's take a look at the uh, topic of Taiwan's semiconductor industry. I think uh, many of you may be uh, more interested in. Uh, Taiwan's semiconductor manufacturing uh, play a very key role in the global economy. Our total market share for foundry occupied 63% uh, of the global, global market. Uh, in terms of the advanced semiconductor chips, uh, Taiwan produced 73% of the advanced processing chips below 7 nanometer. We also lead the world in the R&D work for developing more advanced, uh, for example, two nanometer process. Uh, the success of Taiwan semiconductor industry actually highly relied on joint collaboration of the global supply chain. We need collaboration with the world. Uh, without the US, EU, and Japan support in upstream equipment and material, we won't be able to manufacture the best semiconductor products. So through this model of cooperation, uh, Taiwan provides advanced semiconductor manufacturing to serve the leading American IC design company, forming a complete supply chain relationship. So in the future, AI, 5G, uh, the high performance computing uh, technology will all require more advanced semiconductor chips. Uh, Taiwan will continue to work closely with our global partners, especially the United States, to engage in the uh, development of advanced semiconductor manufacturing. With the uh, rapid restructuring of the global supply chain, many countries are focused on supply chain security and resilience, particularly with regard to the semiconductor industry. Actually, the semiconductor industry is a highly complicated and advanced manufacturing industry. It took Taiwan over 40 years to develop our industry. It requires high quality talent, requires very good IP protection, and in Taiwan, we have more than 1,000 companies in our supply chain, alongside with the uh, stable infrastructure, including the water, the stable electricity. And most importantly, semiconductors are a product of international cooperation by nature. No sing single company can independently operate to complete the entire semiconductor manufacturing uh, process. Of course, Taiwan is focused on foundry, and we collaborate with global design company and equipment and uh, material suppliers to achieve the most efficient semiconductor manufacturing model which also in turn support the growth of other industries. Taiwanese companies are developed to continuously technology breakthrough and to providing the world with the most advanced in uh, highest quality and most cost effect effective semiconductors. For these reasons, I believe Taiwan is in the key position that cannot or very difficult to be replaced or re re predica predicated. So today, the majority of the world's most advanced uh, semiconductor manufacturing take place in Taiwan. 
any disruption to this in Taiwan could severely impact the high-tech sector and economies around the world. This highlights Taiwan's interconnectedness with the global economy. This demonstrates why Taiwan is so important. By interfering or disrupting Taiwan, China itself will also be greatly impacted. As I mentioned earlier, such protection facility depend on extensive connection, connections with the outside world, with the uh, United States, EU, and Japan, to ensure the foundry operation. That's why I reiterate again and again, because that is very important. So if Taiwan's TSMC operation is controlled or taken over by military force, this would stop TSMC's operation. Uh, U.S. Secretary of State uh, Brinken has stated that were anything to happen to Taiwan, the effect on the global economy would be devastating. I would like to put it in another way. So if Taiwan is safe, the global supply chain will also be secure. This is in the world's greatest interest for Taiwan to work with the U.S. and other allies to maintain the most efficient production. I would like to highlight again the fact that Taiwan's economy is highly connected to the world and that the world cannot thrive uh, economically without Taiwan's stability and success. China also needs Taiwan's semiconductor products as much as the rest of the world does. So if Taiwan were to become involved in a conflict, the, the whole world would be affected for lack of access to Taiwan's technology and products. This also includes the U.S. So in the future, uh, I will be keen to see more cooperation between Taiwan and the U.S. by leveraging our strengths. The United States and Taiwan are natural allies and partners. We both share universal values of democracy, human rights, rule of law, and market economies. Our priority is to work with the United States to form a resilient supply chain. We will continue to ensure the pivotal role of division of labor. Thank you very everyone for your time and attention today. I hope that Taiwan and the US relationship will continue to grow stronger than ever. So let's work together, together to create more prosperity and benefit to all. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you for those remarks. <clears throat> those certainly provide a lot of uh, food for thought and, and discussion. Uh, as I said in the beginning, we're going to have a, a conversation, uh, and then we'll have questions from uh, both of uh, both sets of our audiences uh, going forward. I should say that the minister has a has an important meeting right after this event, so we're going to stop uh, on time or perhaps a few minutes early to make sure that she doesn't miss that. Um, I want to talk about semiconductors, but let's begin with a bigger question um, and just focus on the sort of the, the, 
uh, our administration, which uh, is now in its, you know, well into its second year, but maybe you can say a few words about how bilateral relations between Taiwan and the United States changed under the Biden administration compared to previous administrations. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, uh, under the uh, Biden administration, uh, Taiwan and U.S. relationship is uh, even more robust and continue to grow uh, because uh, we have uh, uh, a lot of the uh, dialogue. And uh, very important is uh, concerning the uh, supply chain cooperation. Uh, I just mentioned uh, Taiwan is a natural partner with the U.S. So uh, that is have uh, a lot of room for uh, dialogue to strengthen the uh, supply chain cooperation. And of course, we uh, are very thanks the uh, uh, Biden administration to uh, initiate uh, the 21 uh, U.S. Taiwan Century Initiative. That is uh, uh, the same page with the IPEC. So uh, we are very thankful for uh, initiate such kind of the uh, negotiation. My sense is that's just beginning. Not much has happened yet, right? Yes, yes. We'll have you back at a later date and we can talk about Thank progress. Um, one of the things that's happened here is that uh, I, I think there's been a, a, a great focus on Taiwan uh, in the last uh, year or so, uh, partly because of its importance to the semiconductor supply chain, which you've commented on, um, and also because of, of uh, more and more remarks coming from China that uh, have concerned us. You saw, uh, you quoted Sec Secretary Blinken on one of your slides. One of the consequences of that is that, that our, our Congress has begun to, to focus uh, uh, on Taiwan as well, and they have begun to move legislation, such as the Taiwan Policy Act, which has made it out of the, the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, has not yet gotten to the Senate floor, uh, that would, among other things, uh, formalize bilateral trade negotiations uh, I'm not sure that our administration has taken a position on the bill, but I'll ask you, uh, what is your view of the congressional approach? Is it something that you welcome, or are you more neutral? Thank you. Uh, uh, actually, we quite uh, appreciate uh, the bipartisan support for the uh, strengthened uh, Taiwan and U.S. relationship. And uh, that's true. Uh, they also are talking about uh, our two countries need to uh, establish the uh, bilateral trade agreement. We quite appreciate uh, such kind of the uh, arrangement and support for the uh, uh, BTA. And because, uh, because the political reason for Taiwan is uh, very difficult to uh, approach for the bilateral or multilateral or plurilateral uh, FTA. So if the, uh, we can have the uh, relationship with the US, uh, not only strengthen the uh, Taiwan-U.S. Uh, trade relationship, but also uh, can strengthen the supply chain and also uh, make Taiwan more safer and make uh, other countries understand, hey, you also can have the uh, bilateral trade with Taiwan. Yeah. Let's turn now for a minute to, uh, or more than a minute, uh, drill down a little bit on, on semiconductors. You've already laid out Taiwan's role in the in the semiconductor uh, value chain. Uh, first, let's start with the general. What can the United States do to help build a more secure and resilient semiconductor supply chain with Taiwan? Uh, I just mentioned that uh, currently uh, Taiwan is a very important role uh, in the semiconductor uh, supply chain. Uh, we dominate the foundry area. So uh, if uh, Everyone needs the more advanced uh, the semiconductor. Uh, Taiwan would be a key player in the world. And uh, to uh, make uh, global more prosperity, and I think the make the uh, Taiwan more safer <laughs> and, and peace, that is the uh, key issue uh, in my view. Yeah. Well, related to that, um we had an event, uh, we, uh, the administration had an event last week. They rolled out a new rule on export controls. Uh, 
which uh, is focused primarily on, on semiconductors and semiconductor manufacturing equipment and is focused uh, primarily on, on China. Can you say a few words about how Taiwan or how you think Taiwan is going to be affected uh, by that new policy um, in, in general and how is it going to affect uh, the Taiwanese companies that are operating in China and making products in China that contain uh, chips? Uh, uh, first, uh, uh, mostly uh, semiconductor uh, manufacturing in Taiwan. Uh, in China, we just uh, a small part of the uh, uh, percentage in, in China and the uh, uh, more mature uh, process. Uh, all the advanced uh, semiconductor all manufacturing in Taiwan first. And second, uh, I think the uh, uh, Taiwan, the uh, focus on the uh, foundry. So we uh, follow the uh, design company direction. And uh, we follow their uh, advanced uh, process. We manufacture the such kind of the design. So uh, for our company, they uh, quite follow the, our not only domestic uh, regulation, but also uh, need to follow the, uh, the uh, regulation from their current country. So uh, if have any uh, new regulation uh, need to be followed, our uh, company will follow the rule, uh, not only the domestic, but also the other countries or international regulation. And uh, such kind of the uh, new uh, uh, regulation uh, have the two aspects. One is for the uh, high per performance uh, chips. Another is for the equipment. I just mentioned about uh, we, uh, in equipment area, we rely on the, uh, from uh, EU and the US uh, company. So uh, that is, uh, I think, uh, have uh, no relationship with Taiwan. It's really about the chips for you. Uh, yes. yes, and concerning the uh, chips, that is uh, for the uh, more advanced chips. But uh, I just mentioned that our company is a country, country manufacturer. So they follow the clients. So I think the, uh, that, that is the uh, follow the client's direction and follow the client country's uh, regulation. And as I know, uh, the uh, US, the new uh, registration, um, focus on the, uh, some area, but not touch about the uh, consumer products. So uh, consumer product is excluded. So uh, as I know, that is the uh, current uh, regulation. So do you see, um do you see Taiwanese companies deciding to move out of China because of the new rules? Or do you think that it just won't affect them because it mostly involves consumer products? Uh, uh, not like that. That is because the new regulation is for chips, right? And um, the all advanced chips are made in Taiwan, not in other countries. And uh, actually, uh, Afterward, we are manufacture in U.S. also, <laughs> but currently I'm made in Taiwan. And uh, the, according to the regulation, as I know, because uh, the regulation have the more than 1,000 pages, <laughs> we still under study. But as I know, uh, they only restrict uh, uh, without without the uh, consumer products. So consumer product is. Uh, is coded outside the regulation. The, um, the Chinese have been very critical of the U.S. action, which is no surprise. Um, do you think that uh, they ultimately might, uh, might retaliate and do something that might affect Taiwanese companies as well? It's not your rule, it's our rule, but then again, uh, they get to decide what to do about it. That, that, uh, Taiwan just follow the rule, not, not the, uh, the uh, proactive uh, role uh, in this issue. Yeah. Let's uh, move on to a uh, 
get away from semiconductors for a minute. We may come, uh, I think we're going to come back to that. But um, during the pandemic, um, a lot of places closed down uh, worldwide, and it created a lot of disruption in the global economy. Which sectors of Ty Taiwan's economy were most affected by supply chain disruptions then? Uh, and how, what did you do to try to minimize those disruptions? Uh, very interesting is, uh, no voice, it's okay, okay. Uh, very interesting is uh, uh, at the uh, outbreak, outbreak of the uh, uh, COVID-19, uh, many people think uh, Taiwan will be uh, face the very severe situation because uh, we are close to China, and we have a, a close uh, trade relationship. But fortunately, because we have the uh, SARS experience in uh, 2003, so uh, we uh, get a lot uh, very quickly, and uh, response to the uh, and response to the uh, COVID-19. So. Uh, Fortunately, we take action uh, very quick and effective, uh, including my ministry also involved the uh, uh, PPE, uh, uh, p provide the PPE. Uh, the most notable is mask. Uh, my ministry in charge of the mask making. So uh, actually, we uh, didn't affect it in the manufacturing sector. Uh, only the uh, service sector, uh, because the COVID-19 at the very beginning, we have the lockdown or uh, very few people go outside for the, uh, the, the restaurant. And so uh, I can tell you overall, uh, we are not uh, affected uh, in manufacturing sector at all. That's why uh, our uh, economic performance very well in the uh, 2020 and 2021. Uh, in 2020, our GDP grow uh, more than 3%. In 2021, our GDP grow uh, more than 6%. So compared to other countries, I think uh, we, we protect ourselves very well. <laughs> One of the uh, points that you made in your remarks and uh, were on the, the chart uh, above our heads was that about uh, China, uh, Taiwan's uh, foreign investment campaign and efforts to invest, invest abroad and the shift that has taken place over time away from China and toward other uh, destinations, uh, including the United States. Uh, can you uh, talk a little bit about what your, what your government's long-term strategy is for Taiwan uh, to uh, extend its global economic footprint? Yeah. Uh, our presence high uh, took a her office in uh, 2016. Uh, she understand uh, Taiwan is too focused on the uh, China investment. So at that time, uh, President Tsai uh, raised the uh, very important policy. That means an, a new southbound policy. That means uh, Taiwan need to have the more diversify uh, our investment in the foreign area. And after the uh, U.S.-China trade conflict in uh, 2018, <laughs> more and more companies uh, either uh, uh, diversify their investment or follow their, uh, uh, their, uh, their, their the upstream company to diversify investment in the uh, Asian country or India. So uh, that is the situation changed. And another issue also, uh, because the China, their political or economic environment are different. So uh, also make um, company uh, need to uh, move out their base to the other countries. And uh, of course, uh, after the US-China trade conflict, um, some Prota is quite concerned about the security issue, uh, especially in the uh, telecommunication area. So make the company 
uh, also need to uh, diversify their uh, manufacturing base outside the China. So that's why I just mentioned about uh, we uh, investment in uh, South Asia country, and some move back to Taiwan. Uh, uh, currently, they also uh, invest in U.S. and may maybe also some to the EU country. So that is a uh, uh, very diversified uh, in in the current situation. Yes. What do you think beyond the United States? Uh, what do you think is uh, the two or three most attractive other non-China locations for Taiwan investment? Where do they go? In India or other elsewhere in Asia or somewhere else? Yeah, I, uh, I just mentioned that uh, Taiwan is uh, special in the ICT area, but uh, our ICT uh, always uh, cooperate with the U.S. company, including the uh, Apple, Dell, uh, HP. So uh, there may be some uh, follow the direction of those country, uh, company, and then to the, uh, sometime to the India, and some to the uh, Vietnam or other uh, South Asia countries. So that is the uh, scenario. One of the, the new terms that you're seeing here is nearshoring. Sometimes we call it friendshoring. Um, the administration frequently refers to reshoring, which is coming back here, but nearshoring is, uh, friend shoring is going elsewhere. Uh, policies that are intended to incentivize companies basically to move their out operations out of China uh, and to uh, construct supply chains that are more resilient. Um, is this a policy? Uh, what, is, what does your government think about this? And uh, is this a policy that Taiwan is pursuing as well? Uh, actually, uh, Taiwan is quite close, close with the U.S. company. So uh, diversified uh, to manufacture uh, in the different area is uh, sometimes is needed because the uh, cost efficiency issue, maybe the, uh, have the different uh, market or different uh, labor, for, for example. So uh, the uh, friend sharing, that is mean, uh, also need the uh, globalization, but uh, the second view is uh, need to uh, check uh, the uh, location is friendly or not. <laughs> That is my, my interpretation. Mm -hmm. So uh, our Taiwanese company uh, reshoring all, our uh, company reshore back to Taiwan or to the uh, relocated to the Asia country, I, I think also follow such kind of the uh, ratio, yeah. Let me uh, alert the audience. Uh, we're getting almost time for uh, you all, so if you've got questions, feel free to come over to the mic because I'm going to ask one more and then uh, turn to the audience and I've got a few more if we don't have any questions. Um, uh, but uh, my last one at this point would be what additional economic policy support would you like to see from the United States? Uh, I think the uh, uh, establish the more stronger relationship is very important. Uh, so. Uh, have the new uh, BTA is a very good good idea, and uh, recently, because the uh, our uh, some company company will invest in U.S., so they also ask for the uh, uh, avoidance of their taxation double taxation issue, so uh, the so-called ADTA. Uh, so, if have a uh, ADTA that will attract more uh, Taiwanese companies to invest in U.S., yes. 
Okay, thank you. Let's go to our live, I'm going to alternate. Let's start with our first live person with a question. Can you begin, please, by identifying yourself and then be sure to ask a question. My name is Tina Chong with uh, Voice of America's China branch. My question for uh, Minister Wang is that there are a lot of discussions in this town about the potential invasion uh, of Ch uh, China uh, to Taiwan, against Taiwan. And you also mentioned this part of geopolitical reason. So uh, my question is uh, for Taiwan's uh, minister Ministry of Economic Affairs, have you uh, assessed uh, the vulnerabilities of Taiwan's uh, uh, major uh, important infrastructures uh, against uh, any possible conflict? As uh, the host has just said uh, about uh, the, everything that makes Taiwan run. So uh, is there any kind of assessment for this kind of potential uh, impact on Taiwan's economy? Thank you. Do you want to do English or Chinese?我现在要问的问题呢是否已经做了对于台湾重要产业或重要的基础建设在面临可能的青台动作的时候就是应对上的脆弱性的分析 uh, First, I, uh, just my uh, presentation mentioned about uh, I tell you if uh, Taiwan uh, faced the risk what will be the consequences of the uh, economy development, not only for Taiwan, but also for US, for China, and for all of the world. Uh, you can see the uh, Taiwan uh, in the very critical position. Uh, and also, we have a very critical industry in the world. So if you are a reasonable person, you will think twice. <laughs> If you have such kind of a conflict, uh, how huge impact will be for the individual country and for all of the world, the first. And second is uh, uh, Taiwan, uh, yes, we uh, need to uh, defend ourselves. And uh, actually more detail is concerning the, uh, the defense policy, but uh, we, uh, our ministry will follow the guide to uh, have a summer preparation. Uh, preparation not for the war. Preparation is for the readiness of the uh, defense ourselves. So, sorry, I, can, I cannot tell you the detail, but uh, we uh, have a such kind of the conscious. We need to prepare ourselves. Yes. Okay, let's do an online question now. I, you probably aren't going to want to answer this one, but uh, what would be the economic and trade implications of a possible Chinese blockade on Taiwan? How is Taiwan prepared to respond alone and also with regional and global partners like the U.S.? 好,那么现在我们问一下这个网上提交的一个问题,就是如果说出现中国对台湾进行的这个封锁, 行动的话，那么对于台湾在经济以及贸易上面的影响会是什么？台湾在这方面会如何单方面的，或者是呃呃联合区域上以及国际上的一些盟友，类似美国做出应对？ Yeah, the uh, actually the question is quite similar to yours, and uh, that is a more uh, defense. Uh, the uh, area, not for the uh, mi economic area. <laughs> but uh, uh, I just mentioned uh, from my presentation, the first one, the first page, you can see the how important Taiwan. So if you block it Taiwan, you also block many other countries, including China itself. So I just tell you the consequences. I cannot tell you how we can do because I'm not the 
uh, Minister of the Defense. <laughs> Okay, I think we just have, we have two more audience questions. But uh, I, I can uh, have uh, some, uh, uh, say some words is, uh, uh, we quite appreciate the U United States support for Taiwan uh, in many areas. That is very, very critical and important, yes. Let's do the next uh, audience question and then we'll have, we'll have two of those and then it'll be time to wrap up, I think. Please identify yourself and ask a question. Thanks, Bill. Um, Dave I know Nelson. who you are, but tell everybody else. I know. Uh, Dave Nelson with Cargill. Um, thank you very much for being with Cargill. us, Minister. Uh, we're an agriculture commodities trading company and manufacturing. Been present in Taiwan for a long time, importing, exporting, um, and, uh, and local manufacturing. And we really, at first I'd like to express appreciation for the regulatory moves that uh, Taiwan has made recently in, in the importation of, of some products in the uh, ag space really important. Um, my question is actually not related to agriculture directly, but again on, on, uh, on the relationship or the risks with China. How, what lessons do you think Beijing is drawing from Ukraine, and in particular from the economic sanctions that are, that are being uh, applied against Russia in that situation? How relevant do you think they're seeing that for your situation? 好,我是David,我是来自Cardinal,是一个就是做农贸产品的这个贸易公司,然后我们在台湾呢也有进行一些当地生产制造。那么在发问之前我想特别感谢台湾官方在农业政策方面的一些最新的一些法规方面的一些举措 被侵略的这个过程当中，呃，对于呃俄国的这些经济制裁，从这方面你觉得北京当局获得了一些什么样的经验跟教训或启发？ Uh, I don't know what the China will think about <laughs> the Russia and Ukraine war, but. Uh, for me, I just tell uh, the people how severe consequences uh, if they have uh, such kind of a conflict uh, will be uh, for, for China. Because I, in my PowerPoint, I just mentioned about uh, actually we export a lot of the product to China to support them uh, assembling the final product and then sell to the, uh, all of the world. So uh, China depend on Taiwan uh, to supply them semiconductor, the critical parts, and then they can uh, uh, make more profit for their economy. So if they have the uh, such kind of the action, uh, that will, uh, impact the China economy very severely. So I just tell you, tell you in the economic aspects. Uh, so I also want everyone know, I also want the China understand the situation. So if the China want to be uh, stronger or want to be the uh, big country, they need to think about or think twice or more, yes. <laughs> that, that's my, my opinion, yes. Okay. Next question from the audience. We're, uh, this maybe have to be two quick ones if we've got a short one here. Thank you, uh, Mr. Wong, uh, for your remarks. Uh, my name is Amaya. I'm a graduate student at Johns Hopkins SAIS uh, in DC. Uh, by the way, Wo uh, Shueshi Chongwen at SAIS. In your remarks, you mentioned that uh, Taiwanese companies are pulling out of China. So you gave some figures of 83.8% in 2010 to 32.4% in 2022. Uh, my question is, uh, do you think that the decreased interdependence between Taiwan and China will be uh, an incentive for the leadership in Zhongnanhai to kind of uh, provoke some kind of military contingency across the Taiwan Strait? 
呃，你好，我是我叫阿米尔，我现在是在呃华府校区，呃，就是约翰霍普金斯大学在华府的校区里面练，呃，就是学习国际政治的。那之前您在幻灯，在这个投影里面提到了，就是台湾的在中国的投资，从二零一零年的百分之八十三降到二零二一年，啊，好像呃到百分之三十二点三。左右，那么这样子对中国的投资的骤减，呃，您觉得会不会就是引起中南海这里，呃，更对于台湾有这种军事上蠢蠢欲动的想法跟做法？呃、uh, ，two aspects， 呃、uh, ，we even even though we are not increase the uh investment。Not that before, but we still have a huge base in China. And second,、uh, even though not investment in China, but、uh, a lot of the product also need import from Taiwan. So、uh, Taiwan still a very critical、uh, role for China. Yes. One last question. Hi. Thanks for getting this in, Dave Shepherdson with Reuters. Can I just ask, as the U.S. government、uh, subsidizes more chips manufacturing here in the United States, are you concerned that that will lessen the U.S. reliance on Taiwan? And, and, wh and where do you see Taiwanese chip production going in the next, you know, five to ten years? 好，他是来自路透社的记者 Shepard， 呃 ，Shepard。然后他的问题是希望呃了解一下，就是现在美国政府也是对于在呃美国的这些呃生产制造或者企业，给他们很多的一些补贴，鼓励他们晶片能够在美国本地生产。那么呃，目的也是希望减少美国对于台湾晶片行业的。呃，依依存跟依赖，那您觉得就是在这样子的呃鼓励措施之下，大概五到十年之后，如何会影响现在美国跟台湾之间的这个晶片格局？呃、uh, ，I just mentioned about the uh semiconductor supply chain in Taiwan is very very complete, and we are through the uh more than forty years. Uh, establishments, so we already built. I think、uh, no one in in the world have the、uh, similar situation in Taiwan, so、uh, we are very、uh, proud of that, and、uh, we also、uh, improve our supply chain ecosystem in Taiwan.、Uh, concerning the,、uh, our investment in U.S., that is because the.、Uh, For TSMC, most of、uh, TSMC crime actually from US. So uh, they, uh, because their、uh, clients have such kind of the、uh, request, and uh, uh, also uh, the uh, service for their client、uh, locally, so they have the、uh, incentive, and and the.、Uh, Uh, more the U.S.、Uh, subsidy to the uh, uh, new building, so that's why、uh, TSMC、uh, come here to serve their clients. But for Taiwan,、uh, I just mentioned in Taiwan we have a very huge supply chain in Taiwan.、Uh, that、uh, is difficult to、uh, duplicate or difficult. To replace,、uh, that is my view. So、uh, we are great to see the TSMC have the new investment in U.S. But、uh, we also continue to、uh, develop our semiconductor industry in Taiwan. Yes. Well, with that,、uh, time is up. We want to make sure the minister gets to her next meeting. So thank you very much,、uh, Mr. Wang, and please thank the minister yourselves. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Thank you.